Welcome back, guys. It is me, Matt Vidpro. I want to show you guys some stuff that I have discovered about the AI image generation world. Some trends I've been seeing that I think are going to continue into 2024. Image generation is like my favorite, okay? I love it. It has developed so well and so fast in the AI sphere, and you can do so many creative things with it. I love the competition. I love that Dolly 3 is really insanely good, and also Mid Journey V6 is, and Stable Diffusion has its own whole thing thing going on. At any rate, it's one of the best AI facets that exists right now. This is what's blowing my mind. Okay, first up, I gotta show you guys this Reddit post that's going viral on the Midjourney subreddit. Progress on more complicated scenes for photorealism with Midjourney V6. In brackets, try not to look too closely because, of course, it's still AI. We're not fully there yet. The images do break down if you zoom in and look at the fine details. Here's what we'll do first, guys. Let's play a little game. I'm gonna flip through all these images as if you were scrolling on Instagram or something, and you gotta tell me, how many can you just tell are straight up AI right off the bat, without zooming in and looking at fine details? Okay, this is the first image you've had way too long to stare at this one. Next 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 one. Oh, oh, whoa, my god, we can go back to that one for a little bit, and I skipped through that too fast. Yeah, how many of these guys can you tell? I mean, honestly. What are the dead giveaways? Truthfully. They're astonishing. They blow my mind. This is one of the better ones, in my opinion. It's just this mom. The face is very real looking. And so does the dog, of course. If we zoom in, though, we can see over here. Dead giveaway right over here. Dead giveaway up here with the ear morphing. Also, the ceiling's a little weird. But at a first glance from afar, you're like, oh, yeah, that's just like, a you know, a selfie. Yeah, the same thing can really be said for most of these images. This one's also really, really good. The shoes are crazy. The tie is kind of of a giveaway because it like morphs halfway through hand in the pocket though just kind of smiling at the camera look at his face his face if you just zoomed in on that and sent me it'll be like i can't tell oh yeah this one also really impressed me this guy looks like he's on his first date he looks so like uncomfortable you can see like the slight uncomfort in his eyes he has no idea who this woman is or if she likes him at all <laughs> it's so perfect also really impressed by this one right here there's a certain quality to this type of image that is able to trick your brain more than you know your typical ai image these don't have that stereotypical AI mid-journey aesthetic feel to them. So why is that the case? Why are our brains at first glance kind of tricked by these images into thinking they are real? And why is it just now that we're starting to see AI images that actually have this quality to them? Well, first up, most images that we see nowadays are taken with the most popular cameras in the world. They're everywhere. They're the cameras that are going to be on your phone. These cameras have very distinct qualities to them. Without diving too deep into this, any digital camera, it has a lens piece and a sensor piece. The sensor piece is what captures all the light. The lens is what takes all of that light and actually turns it into the image that is then essentially displayed on the sensor. So guys, a camera such as this one has a nice big lens and a nice gigantic sensor. And that sensor itself is bigger than the lenses that are on your phone. This means that that smaller sensor and that smaller lens on your phones are going to have qualities to them. Qualities that, whether you're conscious of them or not, are subtly picked up and understood by your brain because you see images so much on your phone and you've taken so many images on your phone. The AI Midjourney model has learned to pick up on those qualities and can now replicate them on command. A photo taken on your phone is not going to have a blurry background like a professional photo would, because the sensor and lens are too small to produce that blurry background. So you get all of these sharp details in the background. It also has learned that phone photos that are typically uploaded to social media are more candid, meaning people are just going to be doing random things. They're not posing. We can see that very well in this shot. They're not even looking at the camera. Or if they are posing, it's in a nonchalant way. It's not in a professional model scenario. They look like they don't know how to pose. We can also see results that are in indicative of phone cameras that will process images after the fact to improve them because they are limited by those small sensors and lenses. And also just a lot of grain in the background anyways, especially in low light. That's indicative of any digital photo, but especially indicative of small sensor phone cameras. So why is this just cropping up now inside of AI imagery? Why is it Midjourney V6 where we start to see this? Well, by default, most AI products that we see 
see to date, AI image generators are not designed to produce imagery like this because it's not desired by most of the community. If we mosey on over to the Midjourney website and take a field trip, what we will learn is that most people actually don't care if you know that their images are AI generated or not. Sure, we want them to look legit and we want them to look real, but we don't care if they look edited or changed or generated in some way, shape, or form. All people really want to do is bring their ideas to life, whether they be goofy or realistic. People just want to be able to express themselves. They don't want to trick others into thinking that their work is not AI generated. I'm speaking for the majority of the community. Of course, there's going to be those little seedlings who think otherwise. But I think you kind of get the idea. People just want the control to express themselves creatively. And Midjourney is just allowing that at another level. Okay, so I did try the prompt that allows you to devise these realistic looking images out of Midjourney V6. It's pretty potent. There are some specific settings, but it's simple overall. This is like the first good image that I got out of this prompt. It does take a few tries, but this one's pretty believable, I think, for the breed. The guy's face looks real. The lights are really believable. If you zoom in, you can tell, but at first glance, this looks super legit. I'll compare it to something like this. That's super fantastical. I even experimented trying to make the photos weirder and weirder to see if it would like screw with your brain more, but even with like the weirdest photos possible, it still kind of tricks your brain at first glance. You're like, oh yeah, like that happened to someone. Okay, so let's talk about what this prompt actually is. Prompt starts like this, phone photo of subject and location. So, you know, man sitting on a park bench posted to some social media, Instagram in some time frame, March of 2018. And this is very important. You have to make sure you get these right. It has to be in the raw style with zero stylization. That's the big kicker here. And then in the aspect ratio, it says some vertical aspect ratio, but I found it works pretty good for both, honestly, whether it be a square aspect ratio, vertical or widescreen. Obviously, the more fantastical your subject and location, the more difficult it is for the AI to produce it. But you can get some really fun stuff out of this. Let's try something crazy, actually. Elmo alone and at the bar posted to we'll say snapchat that's worked for me pretty well snapchat story in 2020 again very unrealistic image here but it's a phone photo posted to snapchat no stylization being done by the mid-journey model the results here they all look very iphone-esque they look sort of elmo-ish this is the only one that really resembles elmo i'm wondering if we should prompt it better you can always do a variation that's very powerful with mid-journey let's say candid phone photo photo of Elmo from Sesame Street. <laughs> Yes, and these are the images I like to see. Oh no, Elmo. For some reason, this makes him look like the bartender. Elmo's girl just broke up with him and she won't text him back. But these are all honestly pretty good. I'm happy with this. They do give off that vibe of being taken candid on an iPhone though, and that was the whole point of this. I kind of got lost in the Elmo sauce, but this looks like some weirdo took his Elmo toy to the bar. It's just him and Elmo. <laughs> Uh, it's like some, it looks kind of like some world, some alternate universe where Elmo is a celebrity who can be caught drunk at the bar alone. And people are like, oh my God, it's, it's Elmo. I digress. The one thing I haven't tried yet is does this only work with mid journey? I'm going to suspect the answer is yes. I'm also going to suspect you could probably get the same results out of a fine-tuned stable diffusion model, but I do want to test it out in Dolly 3. I think Dolly 3 is just going to apply a level of stylization no matter what we do. I still think we'll get good results, but not as realistic and convincing. Ooh, okay guys, these aren't bad at all. <laughs> Why is he always like taking a photo of himself? I don't understand. These do look pretty good. He definitely looks like he's had a rough night at the bar. This one's good. I like this one a lot, but it has like a little bit too much of a blurry background maybe he just looks like he had a rough time he's so drunk that he's like showing off the photo we took okay this one's a little bit creepy it's like creepy realistic i don't know it doesn't have that same candid feel that the mid-journey images have i still think it's actually pretty good so this prompt does work pretty good with Dolly 3 then. That's that's good to know. So yeah, that's one of my favorite trends that's going on right now in the AI image generation space. I think it's going to continue to get more crazy in 2024, especially because it's an election year. So I think people are going to try to devise all kinds of nefarious election themed photography that's not real. I have something even more crazy to show you that's in the same vein as this. A wonderful AI account on Twitter reposted this, Scobalizer. From now on, you cannot believe anything you see. She is AI and the notes are AI. This is 
really mind blowing, especially if you're, you know, in tune with the AI art landscape. Check that out. This is a AI photo of a woman. She's holding up a note that has handwriting that looks legit. It looks real. The original post here, of course, this is from Reddit, but it's such a shame because I really wanted to find the original Reddit post. I couldn't. I think the user got banned or something because I wanted to see what this included workflow was to produce an image like this and get readable text that's like cursive. It looks so legit. I don't know, guys. It's that trend of weird AI influencers that's sprouting up and it's just super strange. People are going to be deceived. People are going to be tricked. We do not know what is real anymore. All right, so next up, this is absolutely mind-blowing, and I'm so excited for this to become very commonplace in the AI tech generation space. This is coming from Alibaba, of all people, or all companies. This is called AnyText. It's on Hugging Face, visual text generation and editing with AI. Cool part is, is it actually comes with a running demo that I'll link down below, but uh, yeah, I think you guys get the point with this. We can take AI-generated imagery and actually go back and fix the text on it to say what whatever we want, and this is all very impressive, Dolly 3, if you will, levels of text generation, even in other languages, which we haven't seen before in the AI art generation landscape. We can actually edit text as well, so we can highlight a specific section here, you can see with the cake, and then change it from happy birthday to every day. It's super, super cool. This is the kind of thing that I need in my art generation workflows and life. This is the kind of thing that I have to do like a full video on, but I'm just showing it to you guys a little bit early probably before I end up making a video on it. Getting back to my point here, this is 2024. This is the future of AI art. This is what we're going to see developed. Stuff like this. We can make really good AI imagery and now we can put any text we want. We can fix the text that's broken in all of our previous AI images. What this is, guys, is a glimpse at the future. There's no doubt in my mind about this. So I'm kind of wondering, connecting this with the previous story, maybe that text that was written out was done with with any text? Probably not. They're both not really that well known as of yet, but I suppose it is possible. Okay, and finally, again, I think this is probably going to turn into a video of its own at some point, but consistent characters are something that we are going to see become normal inside of AI art generators throughout 2024. I really hope Midjourney is on top of this. Uh, this runway dev takes a little mushroom plushie and is able to convert it into AI video here as a consistent character and a bunch of different styles no less so a realistic 3d style this is more like 2d art more 2d art and then we see him converted into pixel art it's like this weird trippy 3d pixel art even realistic images as well basically this character is now consistent no matter when we generate him he's going to have all of the same qualities that he originally possessed and that's huge for ai image generation this is something i consistently hear that the ai image generation community wants and it's being worked on not just with run way, by the way, I'm going to show you two more examples, but yeah, you can see that the model was trained from all of these input images of the little stuffed animal, so you could also do this with yourself, you could do this with drawings that you might have devised, pretty much anything you want. Apparently, this company right here, EverArt, is also working on this same kind of tech. Easily train powerful AI image styles on your visual identity, meaning any character you want, or I guess styles, of course, as well. You have to request access to it, so it's not really out for everybody, but upload your images and make infinite art in that specific style or with that specific character. The technology for this has been around for a while and I know some of you guys are going to comment that. I'm aware, but it's not mainstream by any means yet. We don't have it in Midjourney, for example, or Dolly 3. However, guys, this is the most promising, consistent character that I have seen come out of AI ever. This is scenario.gg. They mainly focus actually not on character consistency, but on just generative AI in gaming. While that's their focus, they do have consistent visuals, consistent characters, backgrounds, badges, isometric buildings, vehicles, etc. And of course, they've got more than just that. Again, Scenario could be a whole video on its own, which I probably will make. Right now, things are a little bit more limited. You have to kind of build everything via the way Scenario wants you to build it, meaning I got to 
to generate all my characters with scenario first and then train my own model based off of those. But I think a deeper focus on AI consistent characters is absolutely coming to scenario GG in the future. And this is why. Here is the Twitter account for co-founder and CEO at scenario.com. Pinned comment right up at the top. AI character consistency has been solved and looks like sorcery. This top example here demonstrates 100 plus variations of this specific character called Marilyn, which is an AI character made with scenario. And yeah, you can see that this character is very consistent. Same facial features, eye color, eyebrows, nose, mouth. It's all the same across all of these images. This is the kind of stuff I like to see. I hope Midjourney implements something along these lines this year. I think that would be massive for them. I would highly recommend you check the Twitter out because there's so much awesome stuff on there showing off this character consistency in action. Pretty darn amazing. So yeah, in terms of character consistency, this is no doubt my bet for the best character consistency in 2024 unless we see something big announced from one of the other AI image generation platforms. Oh, and I almost forgot to talk about this. Coming from one of my favorite AI accounts on Twitter, Nick St. Pierre, Midjourney CEO in Office Hours just said he thinks that they can get to the Hollow Deck by 2024. I think that the Midjourney CEO is just trying to drive up hype, honestly, because that's like insane. What do you mean get to the Hollow Deck? What does that entail specifically? You're just teasing us, man. Anyways, he continues saying, we're going to build a lot of stuff this year. I think we'll build more stuff than I've ever built before by the end of 2024. Hopefully, we will have a real-time open world. Yeah, that's that's huge claims. Real-time open world's a little bit more specific than Hollow Deck. I don't know what he's planning though. I don't know what Midjourney is trying to conceive here, but you're you're bringing hype to the table, Midjourney. Don't let me down, please. Either way, I hope to see big strides by Midjourney in 2024. I think V6 was proof that they absolutely can compete and despite what other people think, a Midjourney's not out of the running, not by a long shot. I don't know. This is all sort of hinting that Midjourney is going to be more like a game engine than we think. 3D Midjourney stuff is coming in 2024. I thought that was super intriguing. Let me know how you feel about that. I think he's trying to, you know, overhype. There's no way we're going to get to like hollow deck level 3D immersive worlds AI generated by the end of 2024. Maybe I'm underestimating though. I don't know. All right, guys, that's what all I got for you today. That's everything that's been piquing my interest in the AI image generation space. There's a lot going on in the world of AI as a whole. I was planning on doing like a full AI news update video, but I think I'm going to wait till next week to do that. I have so much to talk about though, and I have so many different ideas for videos, so get subscribed, stay tuned, and here's to a great uh, 2024 in the world of AI. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.